Welcome to Sunday Mass with Children. I'm Grace. Hi, and I'm Jeanette. Today is the second Sunday in Ordinary Time 2022. Last week, we remembered our own baptisms as we celebrated the Feast of the Baptism of the Lord. This week, we're going to learn about a wedding. We're going to go to a wedding? Is there pre-event testing? It's the wedding at Cana. No tests are required. But we should start with a prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for all the gifts you give us. Thank you especially for the gift of the first miracle that Jesus performed at the wedding at Cana. Please transform us just like how Jesus transformed water into wine, so that we can be faithful sons and daughters of yours. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for sharing your amazing artwork with us week after week on Little Faith Steps. The entries from our local and international friends are colourful and encouraging. We are always inspired by your sharing and beautiful artwork. Keep them coming.
Jeanette. Jeanette. Yes, Grace. Let's play a game called Grace Says. Um. Okay. You can play along too at home. Grace says, touch your ears. Good job. I wonder if she can hear me. Grace says, raise one hand and sway from side to side. Wow, she's good. Finally, the challenge. Grace says, raise two hands and raise two legs. Hey, that's impossible. You try your best and that's what counts. Good job. Were you able to do that too? No. Remember how Jesus did something that was impossible for any of us. Do you know that story in the Bible? Let's go to Joy and Jerry. Maybe they'll remember it. <sighs> whoa, what a good workout. That's not jogging, that's sprinting all the way. Why did we join the track and field CCA again? Hmm, I thought it was fine, but I'm had a great workout. Maybe you need to work out more often. <laughs> is that water? Yeah, you want some? This is a bottle of our finest wine. Why jolly good of you, miss. I wonder what real wine tastes like though. Mom never lets me try. I bet if Jesus were here in person, he could put his hands over your water and ta-da, let you have a taste of wine. I don't get what you mean. The wedding at Cana? Cana! Oh, Cana! Isn't that the building next to the church of St. Peter and Paul? No, the wedding at Cana. You really don't remember. No, sorry. Okay, okay. Let me jog your memory. The wedding at Cana. There was a wedding at Cana in Galilee. Mary, Jesus' mother, was there. Jesus and his disciples were there too. On such a happy occasion, the wine flowed freely for the guests to drink. The wine provided for the wedding was all finished. When they ran out of wine, Jesus' mother spoke to him. They have no wine. Woman, why turn to me? My hour has not come yet. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Jesus said to the servants, Fill the jars with water. Draw some out now and take it to the steward. The steward tasted the water. It had turned into wine. The steward called the bridegroom. People serve the best wine first and keep the cheaper wine for later. But you have kept the best wine until now. This was the first of the signs given by Jesus. He let his glory be seen and his disciples believed him. Oh, I understand now about the wedding at Cana. Do you think they had a lot of water for Jesus to turn into wine? Whoa, how many bottles of water are there? Ten! Why do you need so many? No wonder you could barely run. Hey, come on, at least I came prepared, okay? For a job. How hard do you think the teachers will make us work out? Don't you trust them? You know, we can learn from the wedding at Cana. It's not just about the miracle, it's also about trusting how Jesus can meet our needs. Like, how the people at the wedding didn't have to worry about not having enough wine? So no matter what our problems are, we just need to pray and to trust in Jesus? Yes, think about the winemaker, Jesus, and not just the miracle about the wine. Hmm. Hey. Yes, why not? <sighs> hey, it just said don't bottle it out and you whining? Come on. There's so much meaning in the story of the wedding at Cana. It's not just about turning the water into wine. That's right. When Pope Francis celebrated Mass in Ecuador in 2015, 
One of the things he talked about in his homily was the role of Mother Mary at this wedding. I remember. He asked us to meditate on her role as a mother. As a mom, she paid attention to the wedding couple and noticed that the wine had run out. The wine is a sign of happiness, love, and plenty in a family. These days, many families have run out of wine due to many difficulties. Like sickness, loneliness, and not having a job. Mother Mary was concerned, and she was confident when she approached Jesus for help. We should be like her. In our families, we should always look out for each other mm. and turn prayerfully to Jesus when we need help. The family is like the finest wines that are yet to be tasted. People who are experiencing difficulties are like broken jars. Wow. But they have Jesus who can fix their jars and pour them the best wines. Oh, wow. That's very well said. <laughs> That's what the Holy Father said. You are here. Have you ever wondered how Jesus would have been like as a child? 
Jesus came to us as a small little baby and like us, grew as a little child. He was cared for by Mother Mary and St. Joseph in the same way our parents take care of us. You know, many saints wrote of their encounters with Jesus as a child. St. Faustina encountered the child Jesus in her prayer and shares with us, we know we have nothing to fear from our God who would stoop so low as to become a little child for us. Saint Jose Maria Escriva also wrote, he has become so small, you see, a child, so you can approach him with confidence. The child Jesus is celebrated most prominently in the Philippines on the feast of Santo Nino, which means holy child. This feast celebrates Jesus as a child and is associated with a special statue that portrays the child Jesus wearing a crown, red pants, and a white robe with large triangular red collar flaring from the shoulders. Let us remember that we can come to Jesus without fear and with confidence that he loves us and he wants to be close to us and that he gives himself to us in the weakness and helplessness of a little child. For this week's activities, go to our Facebook page, Little Faith Steps. Like our page and share your works in the comments section with us. We can't wait to see them. It is now time to set up your altar table and prepare for Holy Mass. Take a moment now to get these items and see you in a while. Oh, don't forget to take a photo and post it on Facebook or Instagram with the hashtag Catholic Mars at Home. Let us now listen to what Auntie Estella has to share with us in one Mass minute. When Mass starts, you're going to see Father in a colour he hasn't worn in two months. Green! If you recall the liturgical calendar, green signals that we've entered ordinary time. This may sound pretty boring. We aren't celebrating any of the big events in Jesus' life, like his birth, death or resurrection. But you might recall that Jesus spent three years teaching and healing after he was baptised in the River Jordan. In ordinary time, we hear the stories of where Jesus went and what he did. He shared many secrets about the Kingdom of Heaven. He cured the sick and fed the hungry. He told us how to live our lives. And most importantly, he showed us how much God loves us. Ordinary time lets us spend these three years of Jesus' public ministry with him to help us love him more and more. Thank you, Auntie Estella. Let us now settle down, sit in front of your altar table, take a moment to be silent and prepare for Holy Mass. Welcome, my brothers and sisters in Christ, to the Holy Mass with children. Thank you for joining us to sing songs of praise and learn more about how Jesus performs miracles in our lives. There's nothing like giving God our heart and our voices to worship Him as our loving Father. Let us now worship the Lord together on the second Sunday in Ordinary Time, 16 January 2022. We offer up this Mass for the children of God that our eyes may be open to the wonders God has done for us. Join us in singing the processional hymn.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, welcome to this celebration of the second Sunday in Ordinary Time. Yes, we have finished, right? We went through Advent, and then we had Christmas, and now the colours are changed back to green to remind, remind us that we are in Ordinary Time. And so, on the second Sunday of Ordinary Time, we come to thank God right, for the new year that we have entered to come and pray and ask for the Lord's blessings. And as we come to celebrate the sacred mysteries, as we reflect on our need for God, His love for us, we ask the Lord for pardon and mercy for our sinfulness, for our failings. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who govern all things, both in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the pleading of your people and bestow your peace on our times. 
We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. About Zion, I will not be silent. About Jerusalem, I will not grow weary until her integrity shines out like the dawn and her salvation flames like a torch. The nations then will see your integrity, all the kings your glory, and you will be called by a new name, one which the mouth of the Lord will confer. You are to be a crown of splendor in the hand of the Lord, a princely diadem in the hand of your God. No longer are you to be named forsaken, nor your land abandoned, but you shall be called my delight and your land the wedded. For the Lord takes delight in you and your land will have its wedding. Like a young man marrying a virgin, so will the one who built you wed you. And as the bridegroom rejoices in his bride, so will your God rejoice in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. There is a variety of gifts, but always the same spirit. There are all sorts of service to be done, but always to the same Lord, working in all sorts of different ways in different people, 
It is the same God who is working in all of them. The particular way in which the Spirit is given to each person is for a good purpose. One may have the gift of preaching with wisdom, given him by the Spirit. Another may have the gift of preaching instruction, given him by the same Spirit. And another, the gift of faith, given by the same Spirit. Another again, the gift of healing, through this one Spirit. One, the power of miracles. Another, prophecy. Another, the gift of recognizing spirits. Another, the gift of thumbs. And another, the ability to interpret them. All these are the work of one and the same Spirit, who distributes different gifts to different people, just as He chooses. The Word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. There was a wedding at Cana in Galilee. The mother of Jesus was there, and Jesus and his disciples had also been invited. When they ran out of wine, since the wine provided for the wedding was all finished, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. Jesus said, Woman, why turn to me? My hour has not come yet. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. There were six stone, ja six stone water jars standing there, meant for the ablutions that are customary among the Jews. Each could hold 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to the servants, Fill the jars with water and they filled them to the brim. Draw some out now, he told them, and take it to the steward. They did this. The steward tasted the water, and it had turned into wine. Having no idea where it came from, only the servants who had drawn the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom and said, People generally serve the best wine first, and keep the cheaper, cheaper sort till the guests have had plenty to drink. But you have kept the best wine till now. This was the first of the signs given by Jesus. It was given at Cana in Galilee. He let his glory be seen, and his disciples believed in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, what caught my attention in today's Gospel, we know of the miracle of Jesus turning water into wine. But the thing that really caught my attention was the last line. This was the first of the signs given by Jesus. This was the first of the signs given by Jesus. How many signs did Jesus make, give? And why did John in his gospel use the word signs? In most of the others, they will say these are the miracles 
that Jesus performed. But John's Gospel, he highlights, he doesn't have many miracles, and even the miracles, he considers them signs. There's seven signs in John's Gospel. As we have heard, the first is the changing of water into wine. The second is when he heals the official son. The third, when he heals the paralytic that is by the pool, right? the man who was paralyzed, and Jesus healed him. The fourth was when Jesus fed the 5,000 with the five loaves and two fish. The fifth sign was when Jesus walked on water. The sixth sign was when he healed the man who was born blind. And the seventh and last sign was when he raised Lazarus from the dead. And so we look at all these. These are all miracles. These are all things that Jesus did. Healing, raising from the dead, right? Multi the multiplication of loaves. All miracles. But yet for John, they were signs, not just miracles. Is it that the signs equals to miracles? For this, I think we need to ask ourselves, what is a sign? What do you mean by a sign? Right? When we travel on the road, we will see many signs. Road signs that tell us to stop, signs that tell us right, whether it's a cross-junction, signs to tell us how fast we can go. Usually, signs give us information. Signs tell us whether, you know, the sign on the door will tell you push or pull. Where is the exit? And so signs give us information. And so if we look at these miracles, were they giving us information? What kind of information? Not really. And so the next thing about signs is, it's not just about information, but when we look at a sign, we see something that the sign is pointing to. The sign gives us a deeper meaning, right? So if you look at the sign of a heart shape, what does it mean? Is this how our hearts look in our body? No. But we have come to accept that this sign, right, in the shape of a heart, is the symbol of love. And so now, you know, you watch, if you know the Korean, the Koreans like to give, you know, this kind of heart shape, this kind of heart shape, right, to show love, right? This is a sign of love. But there are other signs of love, right, when, you know, you give somebody a rose, right, the rose is a sign of love. Better still, if you can have roses in the shape of a heart, even more so, right? Double love. But we also have other signs. We have a sign of this cross. But a cross in this way, as you see in the picture, it means that it's wrong. This cross tells us no or no entry, right? This cross that we have is that it's wrong. But when we turn it the other way, the sign of this cross becomes one, if we are non-Christian, maybe, right, first aid, hospitals. But for us, the cross, the ultimate cross, is the cross of Christ. Right? That's why we say, you know, for the Catholics, we also have the sign of the cross that we make to, to give us that deeper meaning. Right? That the cross is not just a piece of wood that existed 2,000 years ago, but Christ on the cross gave it the meaning, right? For other people, hardship is love. For us, the cross is the ultimate act of love that Christ gave his life. The total sacrificial love, the total giving of himself, that loving without, con without condition. And so for us, the sign has a deeper meaning. And another way to look at sign when we use the word sign, the word sign means there is evidence 
there is proof of something that is existing. Right? You know, even you, for me, I like nature and so I watch, you know, sometimes documentaries of people look, going into the jungle looking for an animal. Right? How do they find the animal? They go around looking for signs. Looking for signs whether if they're looking for a bird, maybe they look for a bird nest and they see, oh, the bird has built a nest here, the birds must be nearby. Sometimes they're looking for an animal that they will look on the ground to find either whether they can see the tracks of the animal to tell them that the animal is nearby. Some people can even tell by the tracks of how recent the animal was here. Or the other one is not so nice, but it's the animal dung, right? If they can find animal dung, means the animal was there before and it was there recently. And so, when we see a sign of life, we see a sign of an animal, it gives us the proof, the evidence. And this is something which we also know that people have looked and asked for a sign. Over and over the Gospels, people say, show us a sign. Last year, I don't want to give you the image of the lady, but we know of a lady who say, show me your badge, right? Show me your badge. Where is your authority? Whose authority? It's just a badge. But the badge represents that authority, right? And so we want, give me the proof of who you are. Right, for us, sometimes maybe it's our IC. Maybe it's a proof, a, a sign to show that you are really who you are. And so for us, when Jesus performed the miracles, it was not just about the healing. It's not just about as if he's a magician. If he was just about something that wonderful that happened, okay, he's a great guy. But his signs point to something else, point to a deeper meaning, a deeper identity of who he is, an evidence and a proof. And that is why in the Gospels, the people say, show us a sign to prove who you are. You say you are the sign of God, a son of God, what sign can you do to prove this? And this is where, for us, the wedding of Cana is so important. In fact, the wedding of Cana is linked with the last two feasts that we have celebrated, Epiphany and the Baptism of the Lord. Right? These last two Sundays that we celebrated, Epiphany was the sign of Christ to the world. Epiphany was when the three wise men, non-Jews, representing the Gentiles, came looking and the glory of God was revealed that these people who were not Jews, but yet they recognised Christ and Christ was revealed to the world. At the baptism of the Lord, what happened last week when we reflected, right? Was it just, oh, Jesus went for a bath? No, right? At his baptism, the heavens opened, the Holy Spirit came down like a dove and a voice said, Behold, this is my beloved Son. The Jesus's Identity as the Son of God was being revealed. And so today, in the wedding of Cana, we see a sign that Jesus changes the water into wine. He made people happy, the best wine. But what was it more? It was Jesus' first miracle, his first act in his ministry to show that he had this power to do miracles. He, to prove that he was the Son of God. And so today, more than just the story of the changing of water into wine, let us focus on the signs of God in our life. Many times we ask, where is God? Is God present? Why don't I see God? Why don't I feel God? Why don't I know God's presence? The question is, do we see the signs? Are we remembering the signs? Because for us as Catholics, we have many signs, many symbols, right? We have the sign of the cross. We have the sign 
of the dove that represents the Holy Spirit, fire that represents the Holy Spirit. We have many signs, even the holy water that we use. Right? Last time, now COVID, we can't all share holy water. You know, before you enter the church, we would dip our fingers in the holy water and bless ourselves with the sign of the cross. Why? Is it, wow, this is magic water I take and then I become blessed. No, that water, again, is a sign for us to remember our baptism. When we make the sign of the cross, we are saying, I remember I was baptised, I am baptised, I am belonging in the church. And so that is a symbol, right, a sacramental that helps me to remember. In fact, the biggest signs that the church has are the sacraments. And so it's not just a sign, is it, oh, this is just a symbol, but the sacraments that we have point to something deeper. Right, we just now talk about the seven signs in John's Gospel. We also have seven sacraments. The word number seven in the church is very uh, important. Right? So you will see it happening many times. And the sacraments help us to remember God's love. Of course, ultimately for us, the ultimate sign is the Eucharist. But we're not saying that, oh, this is just a sign. It's not the actual thing. But it's telling us it is a sign of God's love, a remembrance of His act of giving us His body and blood on the cross, as well as continually to be, so that we can be, become part of His body, that we become right, connected to Him and we are receiving Him in that presence. And so for us, sometimes we may think, how do I believe that this is really the body and blood of Christ? It looks like bread, it looks like wine. How do we believe? And this is where for us, the signs in the Gospels are very important. They help us, right? The, water, the changing of water into wine. Do you believe that Jesus can change this? And this is where the, the reason, right, why John's Gospel talks about the signs, the signs that Jesus gave was so that his disciples could see his glory and the disciples could believe in him. The disciples saw his signs, saw his miracles. He, they saw the sign of the multiplication of loaves. They saw the sign of the water changing into wine. And so when they came to the Last Supper, when Jesus changed bread and changed wine into his body and blood, they knew it's possible. If a man right, can change water into wine, why can't he change this into his body and blood? We believe that if Jesus can perform miracles, he can do something as simple as this. But more than that, you know, the invitation for us is to see and to remember. And this is another thing that the sign helps us in our faith. When sometimes we feel, I don't hear God's voice, when sometimes I feel I'm not sure, I invite you to remember that story of Peter. After Jesus had died, after you know, his resurrection, what did Peter do? He went back fishing. He said, I want to go back fishing. He's a fisherman. He went back to what he knew. But then what happened? He fished and fished. No fish was caught that night. And then in the morning, they saw somebody and that somebody said, put your nets out. And they caught so many fish. But this was, is it a miracle? Just another miracle? For Peter, it was more than just a miracle. For Peter, it was a remembering of his first call. When Peter was called, it was also a miraculous catch. Also, when he couldn't catch anything at night, and Jesus says, cast your nets into the deep, and he caught that fish. And so this second time when he did that, he remembered the first time. He remembered this was his call, this is his master. And so for me, I want to invite you to think of your own life 
What are the signs of God's love that you have experienced, that you should hold on to? For those of you who have been following uh, this, this Mass for Children from the very beginning, you will know of my story of the rosary. Right? This rosary is special to me. People can say, oh yeah, it's a very nice rosary, a very big rosary. But for me, it's not just because it's big, it's nice. It could have been a small rosary, but the rosary is special to me. It's a sign for me because it's a part of my vocation call, my call to the priesthood. And so for me, this is important. Another thing I want to share with you, another sign for me, is because of, I like nature. There was once I was at a retreat and I was struggling to pray and I told God, I cannot pray. You know, the priest asked me to do one hour of prayer and I say, oh, yeah. I bargained with God. At the beginning of the prayer, I say, God, half an hour, right? One hour is too long. I say, half an hour, if I pray and pray and I cannot get anything, I will stop after half an hour. And so I was sitting there Right, in the church of St. Ignatius, I was in the columbarium, I was so bored, I read the passage, I had nothing, you know, my prayer was not doing anything. And all of a sudden, in front of me, I saw a trail of ants. Ants going to and fro, I think they found some food and they were just going to and fro. And I was so bored that I said, I wonder if there are any ants in the Bible. And so I went to search. And it came out, Proverbs 6.6 6. Look to the end, you lazy bones, consider its ways and be wise. And I knew God was speaking to me. Right? He knew I was being lazy and he said, well, I'll speak to you through the end. I'll speak to you and to tell you, look at the end, see how simple his life is, how mundane his life is, yet he still does it. Right? We always say hardworking as an end. And so for me, God was reminding me He was in control. That even if it was difficult, it was not about how wonderful I feel prayer is, but am I praying because God is there? And so nowadays when I see ants, right, it's a reminder. And for me, I have many other stories of nature, squirrels, eagles, you know, of how they remind me of God's love. And I want you to think about your own way what is your own sign how has god been revealing himself to you and to hold on to that it could be miracles when you ask for something and god gave it to you don't just remember wow i passed my exam wow i got good results i got a good job but to remember god to remember his love it's just like you buy a rose you can keep that rose and think oh this rose is very beautiful but if it's about the person who gave you the rose, the person is more important. The love that came, not the rose itself. And so let us pray that we hold on to the signs in our lives to remember God's love. And as what the gospel invites us to remember, that we believe. That these signs help us to believe in God. Amen. And so as we have said, as we have heard in the gospel, the signs help us to believe in God. And so let us respond by professing what we believe. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, Born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through Him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, He was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day. In accordance with the scriptures, 
He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. O God, who transforms the image of your Son in this Eucharistic feast, with open hearts and a grateful spirit, we lift up our prayers, bringing to you our needs, asking especially for your help and compassion. For our religious leaders, Pope Francis, Archbishop William Goh, all priests and clergy, we pray that they be a light in leading the Church, allowing the grace of God to work in their hearts and form them into a consecrated community of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For leaders of every nation, we pray that God will guide them in their service to their nation and grant them wisdom to promote peace and work for the common good of the people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the church, we pray that we may be a sign to the world of the transforming power of God and be instruments of his saving message to all seeking deeper meaning and purpose for their lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For victims of earthquakes, floods, typhoons, and other natural disasters, we pray that God grant them strength, renew their hope, and touch the hearts of many to assist those in need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those affected by the coronavirus and the variants through illness, isolation, or anxiety, that our Almighty Father would ease their fear, grant them courage, and help them to recognize his presence in their midst. We pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us take a moment for our personal intentions and the intentions of our family and friends who have asked for our prayers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our loving Father, you transform the water of our daily life into the wine of your eternal kingdom. Graciously hear the prayers of your people, and may we experience the power of your loving mercy and glory. You promise through Christ our Lord. Amen.
that my brothers and sisters and my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, your mighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries, for whenever the memorial of the sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and took willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which shall be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and William our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father,
Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. Who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. And so as you partake of this spiritual communion, I invite you to pray, to reflect on God's love, not that just that communion is receiving, you know, this magical power from God, but it's about that union with Him. That you receive that you want to be in communion with Christ, in communion with the people of God, the church, in communion with your family, with your friends, with the people around you. We invite all those watching to make an act of spiritual communion with a spirit of gratefulness, thanking God for His infinite love and sacrifice. With humble and contrite hearts, let us express our desire to invite Jesus into our souls. My Jesus, I believe that You are present in the most holy sacrament, I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Pour on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness, make those you have nourished by this one heavenly bread, one in mind and heart. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless all of you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Each of us have received many gifts and blessings. The most amazing and precious gift of all is the gift of God's only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. This single gift, more than 2,000 years ago, has empowered the Church to share God's love all around the world and touch countless lives. The early Church could grow because of the love and sacrifice of millions of us. Apostles, martyrs, missionaries, and ordinary people, all disciples contributing our share for church and society. As we celebrate the 200th anniversary of our Catholic faith in Singapore, each of us have been given gifts of time, talent, and treasures, not to be used for ourselves, but to be used for this mission. If we reflect on our lives, God has blessed you and I and everyone abundantly and without fail. As in the Gospel of St. John chapter 6, verse 1 to 15, the young boy immediately responded to the situation and made a difference by offering his five loaves of bread and two fish. It was in deep trust that God, our Lord Jesus, will be able to fix the challenging hunger situation of the crowd. To resource the pastoral plan, the Archdiocese needs your financial support in several areas. For Catholic education, for the growth of families, especially our youth, for the development of church leaders, for the catechesis, formation and evangelization of all Catholics, for the care of our shepherds for scholarships for church workers, for a digital church, 
for the premises we need to operate, including a new Catholic hub. Let me begin by thanking you all for your generosity in supporting Catholic Foundation. We all have different roles to play. Whatever God has given to you, we must give back to God and to the community. The church exists for humanity. So in giving to the church, you are helping us to give back to society. And we hope that you will continue to support and to help to bring more people to support Catholic Foundation. Join the gift community to realize our pastoral vision of a more vibrant, evangelizing and missionary church. Scan the QR code and pledge today or visit catholicfoundation.sg.